Tell you what, you both get it out of your system right now. I don't feel like editing this weekend. Get it out of your system. Go. I will not. What, cuss the profanities? I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your daddy? I am your father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? All right. Well, let's get going with episode 200 of Fathers of the Grind. My name's yeah. Tim, here with Derek yeah. and with Dan. <laughs> Guys, not only is this episode 200 of Fathers of the Grind, but breaking news. This is going to be the final episode of Fathers of the Grind. <gasps> all right. Tim, gone. you're firing uh, us? But not yeah. the final episode of the three of us doing podcast stuff together. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Uh, but Fathers of the Grind as the show name and kind of as the theme of this is gaming from the point of view of dads. That's run its course. We also have had a, another co-host who hasn't had kids yet. We thought maybe if we, we let him join, he would have kids, but it well, didn't work. I mean, I have a cat, right? So Doesn't count. Yeah. Doesn't Shut count. Up. I tell you guys every time, listen, having a cat is just as hard, if not more difficult. Yeah? Does your cat come out of her crib and come walking up to you like my Tyler just now did? Does that yes. happen? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. You guys have a crib for your cat. Not weird at all. It's fine. Um, totally all right. Normal. Totally normal. So what I thought we could do to wrap things up for Fathers of the Grind, before we move on to the next uh, new and exciting thing, which, by the way, the plan is we'll give you guys all the info about that show. We'll talk about what it's going to be and have the first episode ready and then start on that regular cadence there. So don't worry. You'll get plenty of your fill of the three of us talking. But – uh, I do want to wrap things up just by talking about stuff we've enjoyed about this show, maybe some of our favorite moments, and especially, uh, Derek, from you and from myself, just talking about what it's been like to try to do a podcast while having kids in the house, um, Dan, what it was like to listen and then join in. So I thought it'd be cool to just kind of recap our thoughts on the overall show. Oh, boy, someone's in trouble. Uh, <laughs> our thoughts on the overall show and what it's like to to try to be gamers with all the stuff we have going on in life. So. We won't talk about stuff we're playing right now. We're going to move all that over to the new show, unless you guys really want to. No. So I'll throw, I'll throw it over to you first, Derek. We started recording in, was that 2016? Yeah, I was going to say, I think just doing a quick math, I think we average about 50 episodes per year. Yep. So I would say we started four years ago. I know we started in like the beginning of the year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's right. It, it, was like, been... it was like January 15th or something like that. Yeah, so yep. so 2016. So it's kind of crazy to look back and go, man, we did this show for four years. And we, yep. did, we did it for three and a half years, just the two of us. Yep. And I, th I would have to say, obviously, there's been a lot of like individual memories that I liked that we'll, pro we'll probably hit on or something to share about. But for me, the overall thing that I liked the most was um, – just having the opportunity to talk about easily my favorite hobby. Like there's a lot of stuff I like to do. I love to write music. I love to play guitar. I like to run and walk and all that stuff. But my favorite hobby is video games. And I've always been very passionate about it. And to be able to talk to another person that I connect with, which that's obviously Tim, not Daniel. Spoilers, obviously. Not, not Daniel. Not yet. Um, We're almost but there. But to, to talk with Tim for four years and Tim – is pretty much the perfect person. Like, I, I think the way our show started, if I remember correctly, was I messaged you maybe on Facebook and was like, hey, or maybe it was on PlayStation because I think we had just started playing video games together and I was yep. just like, hey, would you be interested in doing a podcast with me? We have and been I, doing some I, Rocket League quite a bit at this point. Yeah. So we, like, knew each other, but we didn't know know each other. And it wasn't until we did the podcast that I can now say – especially now that we've done it for four years, that he was like the perfect person to pick. Like our personalities, while we have things in common, we process things differently. Yep. We like completely opposite things. And I think that's what you need to have a, I, I don't, I'm not going to say we have a great show because that's subjective, but I think it's a good show. Yeah. And I think in order to have like a good show, you have to have people that have different opinions. You can't have, 
three Derricks. Yeah, there's some there's some give and take, I think, with stuff that one of us likes and the other one doesn't like. We we know how to rib each other. I don't know. I feel like it's been a good back and yeah. forth for the most part. And it's interesting throwing someone like Dan in the mix too, because I truly think he's kind of fifty fifty. Like half the time <laughs> he's like, Derek is right, and half the time he's like Tim is right. Indies and Nintendo are pretty great. So it, it goes back and forth a little bit. And so I think that's why Dan was a great addition. Of course, we had Dan on the show a bunch as a guest, mm-hmm. whether it was for E3 stuff a couple times, maybe for some Game of the Year stuff. I think we might have had you on once or twice. Yeah. And then just on a random occasion of, hey, let's talk Final Fantasy or let's just have Dan on for no apparent real reason. Let's just have him on. So anyway, so he was a good addition to kind of balance that out a little bit too. Although I do feel... I just got to say this. I feel like Dan has been a little more on Derek's side recently, and I don't like it. I don't think I <laughs> well, like it. You know, Tim, I try to open your eyes to the Star Wars nonsense, and you're just not – you're not leaning our way. <laughs> I'm you're, having you're none of it. Leaning. It was the best <laughs> game of leaning. last year, and someday you'll both recognize it. Your eyes are closed, and inside your eyelids is just George Lucas feeding you nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> it's just feeding you nonsense. <laughs> and you're like, yes, George, I believe everything you well, say. That might actually be the funniest thing he, he'll ever say, so we can actually <laughs> get true. rid of him All right, yeah. for the guys. next show. I was, yeah, that was probably a good – a good way to send him off. Yeah, so I, I remember that uh, in 2015, I had just started getting into, all right, I finally own a PS4. I started joining some of the larger podcasts or larger um, gaming groups that IGN had, like Beyond and stuff like that. I was just starting to dip my toes into kind of this, all right, let me make some friends who also like games who are similar to me because there weren't a lot that lived around me. Anytime you bring up video games, it's like, oh, I used to play in college. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> So anyway, and I so I started to find a few people in those larger groups. I was like, I think I get along with them, but you couldn't really read them. Everyone's trying to impress like thousands of people at once or whatever. Yeah. And then I remember there was a bit of a spin-off group that started to happen because some weird splintering stuff happened and beyond. And then this Platinum Achievements group formed. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it was you, Derek, or someone was like, hey, invite this guy. He seems all right from beyond. They were trying to just invite normal non like we want to kiss IGN's butt nonstop people yeah. into this group to talk gaming and to be real and to not be offended by everything. So Platinum Achievements, I think, was the start of what Fathers of the Grind is today. And uh, it was a pretty cool group. Some people, I, a lot of people I didn't know, but that's kind of where I got to know both Dan and Derek a little bit just via Facebook posts and chatting. And then it was like, hey, this new PlayStation Plus game came out for free. Everyone should download it. It's called Rocket League. Yeah. It's basically car soccer. You should all try it. Everyone downloaded that we started doing these Platinum Achievement tournament nights, and we all started getting in their large groups and playing, which is a lot of fun. Started putting together these little like video reels of, of times we played together. It started to become really fun. We got, got these little slogans as we, talk, as we played against people from around the world who would say things like, are you play? And uh, it, it was just real silly, but it was real fun. And I do remember the folks from Platinum Achievements, I think like three or four of them tried to start a podcast, and it was hard for them to get things scheduled, and it wasn't quite... Um, what they wanted and that was part of the reason why i started being interested it was, like yeah, it wasn't a good show it wasn't a good show <laughs> i'm not gonna i tried to listen to it i was like this is not a good show this yeah good show. i think that i think the intentions behind it were good it didn't really deliver and it wasn't consistent they did like one episode and then three weeks later did another one and then so anyway all that to say i remember thinking like boy it'd be fun to do a show like that but i don't want to jump in on what they're doing i kind of want to do my own thing because i don't like the way they've got a structure and so when derek started floating the idea out like hey we can talk for a long time about all kinds of crap playing Rocket League. We should just record it because it would be a, co- a good podcast. So I was like, all right, we game share already, and you fund most of my gaming purchases. I'm not going to say no to you right now. <laughs> He's your sugar daddy? <laughs> he was my sugar daddy there for a little while. I think hopefully we're closer to splitting it these days. Who knows? But anyway, um, that, yeah, that's kind of where it started. That January, I remember right away we jumped in to recapping what was an amazing year of 2015 of gaming. So it was a lot of fun to just kick things off with, hey, what were your favorite games from last year? And that's kind of where it all started. And then we we started to think through, do we want to do regular segments? We knew we wanted to do it as like, hey, we're gamers who are also dads, so let's talk about how it affects family. So we did do some of those things, like what are the favorite games to play with your kids? Or are there moments, and what are your, some of your favorite dads that you've seen in games? Things like, we tried some of that. But if I'm being totally honest, that was a tough theme to stick with. I, kinda, I think we went through 
the ideas I had spitballed I, I early. Think, we went yeah, I think that was more you than me. Because I was just like, <laughs> fathers of the grind. It's just two dads who play games. I just yeah. care about talking about games. I was like, oh, theme, like, yeah. The theme. And I'm like, <laughs> Timmy, does lo- Timmy does love themes. <laughs> Timmy loves themes. Timmy <laughs> loves <laughs> themes. <laughs> well, you'll learn with the new show. I certainly do. But um, but anyway, you're, you're totally right. It was mostly me that was saying and, and I'm kind of glad that we allowed that to sort of fade and just talk about what's interesting to us. Because what I've learned in, as an avid podcast listener, I'm much more interested in hearing people talk about stuff they want to talk about. That's much more interesting. Yeah. Right. So that's why a lot of our shows, we would have some outlines of like, hey, let's talk about these games or, a, or a, there was an E3 conference or a Sony State of Play or whatever. Let's talk about these things. But for the most part, it's just generalized, hey, what are you playing? And then just let each other talk. But I think it's also, and again, and I'm uh, speaking from I'm a fan of our show. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really important for you to talk about things that you like. But I think if, and this is for anybody who's like, well, I want to start my own podcast, especially in like video games. If you're going to start your own podcast, you need to connect with people that have different opinions, but also you, that actually play games. Like there's yeah. like there's yeah. people that have like PlayStation podcasts and Xbox podcasts and Nintendo podcasts, and they like that brand. That's their favorite, but they don't even buy the first party games right. or they'll buy them like 10 years later. And you're not talking about things that are relevant. Does that, do you follow what I'm talking yeah. about? Like, I think one of the other reasons why people listen to our show, the, the ones that do, I think they like our opinions. But I think they like that they know they can tune in and be like, we know Tim is going to play this new release. We know Derek's going to play this new release. I want to hear what the game is like. Yep. Because there, a lot of people don't buy games right away like we do. And so when they can hear us talk about it and talk about things that are relevant, I think that makes for a good podcast too. So it's good yep. to have different opinions, but it's also to talk about things that are relevant, that you're passionate about, but also relevant. Hey, Dan, as someone who you were part of our group pretty early on, you were in Platinum Achievements. And then when we first launched Fathers of the Grind, we weren't like, hey, let's start our own group at first. It was like, we're just going to start a podcast. And we just started to tell people in Platinum Achievements, hey, we have this podcast going. But there did start, we did start to notice a little bit, there was a certain segment of people in Platinum Achievements and in some other groups as well that we were like, these are our people. (laughs) These are our, this is just kind of our group. And also I wasn't necessarily always in tune with what the admins and platinum achievements always wanted and that kind of thing. So again, it was one of those moments where it was like, well, I think it's time to spin off our own thing. So we did both groups kind of coincided there for a little while. And then PA just kind of started to die down. I think we kind of became the new platinum achievements. Essentially. We absorbed them. We pretty much absorbed them. Not unlike Dwight Schrute with his twin in the womb. Yeah. He just absorbed the other fetus. We absorbed the other fetus. Yeah. That's what we did. <laughs> Does so he said, I've got the power of a full grown man and a baby. PA exists, and a tiny baby. Because yeah. I have not, I left that group like four years ago and I never went back. I never checked on it. Does it still exist? I don't know. I, I don't have know. no someone, idea. Someone look it up. You left. <laughs> you all know, left it? I, I think so. Yeah, okay. To be honest, I was going to ask. That was one going to be one of the things I asked because I, I don't actually remember the sequence of events of like right, so the ask, podcasting Daniel's existing. Daniel's going to interview us. Yes. <laughs> Uh, from your recollection, uh, do you remember which came first? I mean, Tim just said the podcast came first, right? So it did. That happened yeah. first. Okay. And then the group happened. So you guys were recording, testing the waters, and then once you realized the, that group was getting smaller, we all kind of just funneled yeah, in. Yeah, because the I remember um, when we started releasing the podcast, it was JP, who goes by Fab now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Way to give it away. <laughs> Spoilers. <yeah>. Spoilers. <laughs> He asked, like, when are you guys going to create a group or something like that? And then I randomly created the group, added added Tim, and then added JP, who's now. I, I, you're right. It was just like three of us were like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I do hey, think I was one of the first this. people in the group. I just don't yeah. remember. And yeah. I, and as Tim said, like, we don't have to get into history. I got, I got sick of some of the people from PA that I was admins with because it was a group of admins from beyond – who created PA, like I created PA, like I actually made it, but it was the idea of one of the admins. They're like, we should start our own group. So I said, I just did it. Like I didn't even tell them. Yeah. I just made it and then added them. Yeah, well, like I the got... old guard of Beyond, right? That yeah. used to be admins and big outspoken yeah, people there. Yeah, we're talking there, about people that were Beyond totally for... changed. 
and it became it was starting to become what I'm assuming it is now. I've been since booted and banned, but uh, <laughs> but I'm assuming it's become a super woke group, just like all the other ones. But yeah, I don't know. Sure. Well, that was so for me. That was the thing. Like, I mean, I eventually got kicked out of kind of funny because I was still in that group when I was um in our group Facebook group because with all and, that and nonsense. Father's the grind. Yes. You were in both. Okay. Yes. Um, because I was still like into kind of funny until that whole fiasco with Colin and the infamous tweet or infamous mm. tweet happened. And then I clearly oh, his really came... funny women's day tweet. Come on. Yes. That was funny. Yes. But very offensive, obviously, Tim, very offensive. <laughs> and then once that happened, I was just like, all right, I'm no, I'm, I'm just done. I, I mostly then started speaking, you know, hanging out in that, in our group more. And then eventually I, I definitely posted some sort of meme that just pretty much insulted everyone in that group that thought the way, you know, kind of the way that they thought how yeah. like no one's allowed to express an opinion or, or the fact that maybe, you know, the other guys who are still in kind of funny did maybe kind of do something wrong in that situation. Nobody yeah. was right in that situation, I think, but. I but feel like a lot of those that. outspoken yeah. defenders are kind of funny in a lot of ways. Some of them are holding out hope that they'll get a job there someday and they want to keep a clean they record. Just be liked. They yeah. just well, be that's liked. the thing. There's, there's some who just want to be liked, but I truly think some of them are aspiring to be game journalists and they, they don't they want IGN to like them. They want kind of funny to like sure. them. So, so if you say something like, for example, the whole, um, who is that Nintendo guy who ended up plagiarizing everything? And he was awful from the start. Uh, um, uh, I forgot. Philip. Son's brother. Yeah. Philip. Philip Mewson. Philip Mewson. So I remember when they first hired him and I was like, this kid stinks. He's bad at his job. Like any of us, not even <laughs> though who are on our podcast, but many in the group would have done a way better job at running the Nintendo voice chat podcast for IGN, writing articles and reviews. Like I was shocked that they hired this kid. He was not good. He was awkward on camera and being recorded and his writing wasn't great. Turns out his writing was not only not great, it wasn't even his. So, uh, so when he got let go, I remember – some of us making jokes, especially in podcasts beyond, like, well, I knew this guy sucked from the beginning, so it's nice to see that there's a good reason to get rid of like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then people like Brian Altano would jump in and kind of defending IGN as if we had just insulted IGN, like, hey, sure. he was good and blah, 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 and this is a painful time for us. You shouldn't make fun of us. And then all of their defenders, people who don't work for IGN, would jump in and be like, yeah, Brian's right. You know, and it's like, holy cow, this is just no unreal. objectivity. No objectivity. Yeah, so the reason, by the way, I got kicked out of Beyond was because I posted something that I knew would upset people, and then I posted <laughs> in our group a screenshot of it, and I was like, hey, guys, let's see how they like this. Someone from our group tattletailed and got me booted. They were like, yeah. look, he's doing this on purpose. And they kicked me out for trolling. Burning those bridges, Tim. Burning those yeah, bridges. I guess. I guess. I'll never work at IGN, but, but well, that is – That really pisses me off. I'm just going to flip my, <laughs> gonna desk, flip right my desk that's no longer there. Your hypothetical test. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. So that's – Basically, what I was trying to get at was the main reason why I like you guys and I like our group is the fact that, for the most part, I would say people – we're Your really sarcastic. Dumb. Shut up. We're really sarcastic, <laughs> just like Derek's being because I know he loves me, obviously. But for the most part, we're pretty objective. Yeah. We express opinions. So. And, and when we're trying to be objective, like we're still kind of being sarcastic, but we know we're being sarcastic. Because they're I, just trying to be a little humorous, but you know. Totally. And I think whether it's in a regular episode or especially, in my opinion, in our Game of the Year episodes that we've done every year, which are some of my favorite memories, we're getting a group of other people to come in and try to create ranked lists uh, together um, and debating those and really just recap. It's really more of a, a deep dive recap of the year where you get a bunch of different opinions yeah. and they talk about stuff they love. So I've always liked those, even if I don't love the final list. But I actually don't really care about the final list. I just think the conversation is fun. Um, but anyway, all that to say, I feel like I feel all like one of the reasons say, Dragon Age is the best. <laughs> Dragon Star Age is the best Star Wars game. All ever right, made. good night, everybody. <laughs> obviously, obviously. <laughs> he um, even paused like he was waiting for me to say. It. I was setting you all up that in a little say... softball. All that to say, Dragon Age, best Star Wars game ever made. <laughs> and um, but no, I mean, I really, I really do, I really have enjoyed uh, actually listening to other opinions, pushing back when I disagree but then still allowing them to have that opinion. And not only that, uh, oh, I do want to mention this too. For those of you who are listening to this wondering, there's no plans to create a new group and make you all move over to a new group. If anything, might just leave the group the way it is. We might end up renaming it. I don't know, but don't worry about that. You can stay in the group, keep posting. It's oh, a, I think we should rename it for sure. We'll probably rename it, but it's going to stay the same. We're not planning on moving over yet again, another migration of any kind. So stay there, keep posting your 
semi-offensive stuff. Then again, Facebook still apparently trolls our, uh, they, they <laughs> oversee all of our groups, even if they're yes. completely private like ours is. And they, uh, and they delete stuff that they consider to be hate speech. That's a different conversation. Um, Looking at you, John. <laughs> John Martin. Um, but anyway. Oh, all that to say, for those of you who are sitting, we should have said it at the top. <laughs> There's no plans on on changing the Facebook group stuff. And the reason that's a, kind of a big deal is most of what we've done and the community we've built is all very built around the Facebook group uh, community that's been that started. And I, it's funny that Facebook is the place. It could be anywhere. It just happens to be Facebook's where it is. Like there's been part of me sometimes that thinks, you know what, we should move to some other platform that doesn't really care what we say. And we won't get, we don't have the Mark Zuckerberg overseer. There's part of me that always thinks that. But then I also think the exposure on Facebook, the fact that everyone's there, it's so easy to use. There's a ton of history already there. Just seems like a big hassle to move off of it. But who knows? Maybe someday we'll be, we'll be somewhere else. But, um, but for right now, that those Facebook groups to me have been a great way to connect with folks who like the same stuff I do, have the same dumb sense of humor that I do, don't get offended about everything that's ever said, um, and also don't feel the need to drag politics into everything. That's another thing I've loved about our group. Like I, I feel like we all make fun of pretty much everything always. I like that. We're like I, I need uh, that. a South Park episode. <laughs> we really are. Yeah, we, just, we make fun of religion. We make fun of. Uh, politics we make each fun other of social media Ourselves, we make fun of each other our kids <laughs> everything all of it white uh, blacks we don't care <laughs> but i <laughs> white benches but i think one of the reasons that i enjoy that white is because benches. for the most part and there might be some folks in our group who i don't really know for sure that maybe their intentions are bad for the most part the intentions are just to get a laugh out of others no one's actually trying to go after someone and hurt them like i, I never actually felt i always feel like you always hear people say things about safe spaces or safe places, whatever else. Sure. And I always make fun of it. I mock it. But it's funny. Our group has kind of become that for those who are tired of walking on eggshells. It's kind of been yeah. a, become a safe place to say whatever you want to say. And I think that as a group, there are people that don't like each other. Like I know people that don't like me and I don't like everybody. But even what? people I don't <laughs> like and they don't like me, we can still coexist and not – be offended all the time. Like, I don't care if they're taking a shot at me and I'll take a shot at them. I, it doesn't matter. Well, because yeah. that's really truly how the world should work. Yeah, Correct. you should be able to but work with not. people you don't <laughs> like and still do your job. Right, exactly. Yep. So but, Derek yeah. has a coexist sticker, bumper sticker on his car. <laughs> what we're of saying. course. <laughs> Obviously. Of course. Obviously. Right next to my LGBT that's all just gun symbols. And a picture of a Sasan. <laughs> it's Obviously. all gun symbols. <laughs> <laughs> and what trucking. Are... Trucks. Oh, yeah. I posted in the group like I was driving and I saw this guy driving a truck and it was LGBT, but it was all like guns. Like, <laughs> Stop it. An L for a gun and G. Whatever the names like, of those guns. I'm open minded, but I'm still conservative about the Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> I use my, my guns to protect different people. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can be tolerant good. of my bullets. All right. <laughs> Jeez. So, uh, so Dan, I know you had mentioned, like, I don't know if you've got other things you're curious about or wanted to ask us, but I've got, only plenty of one question, Dan. I've got plenty of memory stuff that we could go through, but why don't I throw it to you, whether it's stuff you wanted to throw out there or questions you wanted to ask. Well, so obviously in general, I mean, I think you guys had mentioned, but like the favorite moments, because I remember definitely some of the later episodes. I, I don't actually think I remember truly how you guys started, because I think I was just more in the group. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a lot of folks who never so listen to you. You're a fake episode. fan of the show. We <laughs> let you on here as a fake fan. Yeah. And now I'm poisoning everything and I'm deleting all of the files. So. You're like the blessing of kind of funny. Right? <laughs> no, I'm you're the other blessing. one. With the, I'm the one with the lisp. I'm oh, the other one. God. <laughs> who, I, that makes no sense to me. He, he doesn't speak well. But anyway. So, favorite moments. I mean, there's there's been a lot. I, I'm going to let Derek share some of the ones about his own kids because some of my favorite moments involve Derek's family. I mean, my family's had some funny moments too of kids coming in and saying stuff, but I would say truly some of my favorite moments of recording the podcast have probably been the game of the year episodes. And every year has been a lot of fun. Get a whole group of people. Usually you don't want too many. Somewhere in that five or six is usually the sweet spot. And uh, you just recap the whole year. You talk about your favorite elements of games and overall favorite games. And so game of the year episodes have always been my favorite. I put the most effort and time and work into those. I 
I love planning out like what those shows will be like and putting together the final rankings. And this was the first year that I didn't put together kind of a highlight reel video. Usually I spend time doing that because I love video mm -hmm. editing too. But I didn't have time this this uh, winter to do that. But anyway, Game of the Year episodes have always been my favorites. That does make Tim, sense. Tim is the Greg of the show. <laughs> well, let's like, not. Go, he does all the work. And I'm Listen, all the stuff we just said about kind of funny. Don't say that about me now. And I'm Colin. I just like show up and I have a bad attitude and talk about stuff that nobody cares about, so like how you're... Dragon Age is the best Star Wars game. Ever. I'm so... Greg pre-drama, right? <laughs> Greg, please. Yes. So okay. is your is your You're Dragon school, Age Greg. is your Dragon Age comments the equivalent of his tweet? And then and then Tim's gonna tell you <laughs> Tim's to over apologize. There like this. <laughs> and then I and then I canceled you. I canceled you, man. <laughs> what are and you doing, Derek... Tim? And then if there was a desk here, I'd be throwing it. <laughs> And then Derek's gonna leave and start a Patreon and make his mm. own stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Derek's Black, last stand. Black history, yeah, Black History Month. That's what Dude, my he... show will be about. Jeez. Hey Derek, if you were gonna start your own podcast, what's the first step to doing that? What would you do? I'd probably just do it on like like how good looking I am. Like it would just be a podcast of me like doing different poses. <laughs> or just set the camera down by your calves, but like talk into a microphone. That's mm. what you should do. They just like flex whenever I'm talking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, I yeah. if I was to do a different podcast. Yeah. What if you're doing a non gaming? That's actually podcast? a really yeah. That's a good question. Okay, so gaming is obviously honestly. Oh gosh, it's gonna make me sound like a nerd and a hypocrite. I would have to do something on like the like the Bible. Like I'm real passionate about teaching and and understanding. The word of God. So yes, that is crazy. Anybody who didn't know that about me has listened to previous shows. Like he cusses a lot. Pretty sure he's racist. I know he's homophobic. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but he loves a man Jesus. Whore, but he uh, he loves God. Yeah, yeah. Save me, Jeebus. Yeah, I, I would think, probably do something like that. I think if I were doing a non-gaming podcast, it would almost certainly be something to do with parenting foster care stuff i think it'd be uh, really fun to do a show with my wife actually where the two of us talk about what it's like trying to parent together uh <laughs> with our crazy family but the problem there would be getting enough quiet time to just sit down to record <laughs> derek by the way came up with a really really funny joke tonight and he won't let it go dude the opening would be his whole family flipping over that table it really would It'd and tim be would just be off to the it. side like what the all hell? right let's just explain it because i don't think your wife's gonna listen to the show and it's pretty funny so we're like supposed to record at 10 o'clock eastern standard time daniel and i are all set and ready to go which usually i'm the one that's late tim then messages us and he's like hey give me a few minutes and then he comes back later he's like um my wife like got rid of my desk <laughs> and i don't know where it's at so data and i were like what so i just started picturing in my head like tim getting so pissed off at his wife and yelling at her like where's my desk and like fake flipping the desk over trying to flip a desk that does well, not exist that gift if there was a desk gift. right here i'd be flipping it at you so i keep flipping air at desk it. air desk no. Oh, so let's get back to the show. So, uh, Dan, what about you? Dan, if you were not doing a gaming podcast, what would you want to talk, spend time talking about? We already about? know. He already. Oh, I guess that was on game. I was going to say not gaming related. It would be an anime podcast for sure. Uh, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Yep. For sure. That's I can see that. Technically gaming. Yeah. Is it? No. It's They're very, very, gaming. very, very gaming. Oh, oh would, got it. Got it. Got it. Got so it. So I would say um, the other thing. Oh, as far as memories going back to that um you like the game of the year i like it but i find it to be chaotic and there's so many shows so i, I don't like that as much i think for me it was the times when eli would interact like my other kids would interact every once in a while but it was more eli like i could tell eli's a lot like me like he likes to pretend like he doesn't like it but he really likes it so he always takes shots at me um, to make you guys laugh. And I, I liked the way he would interject and he would come in every once in a while. He's definitely stopped coming on my show the last year or so. But but whenever he would pop in, and obviously the probably the most popular episode we ever had was when he <laughs> came in completely nude. Father of the Grind after dark. 
Yeah. And Tim had to censor him out. I had to censor. It was funny. Like, I could have just cut out that whole section, but it was so stinking funny. <laughs> oh, I was, like, you were dying, and I was, like, overreacting and animated, and Ian then walks in after Eli, and he's topless. Well, he Eli, had. What, you said he had just gotten out of the shower or the bath or something, so he came walking in just completely wet. in the birthday <laughs> suit in the background and there was no missing it it was all right there no cares in the world no cares <laughs> and even it after you doesn't... told him he's on the screen he's like i don't care i really don't <laughs> care. i'm i'm right here so that See, was that's... that was like a funny moment but yeah. as far as like what i like about the show because i listen to our show i don't listen to it yeah anymore. what are the moments you enjoy recording the most but i enjoy listening to our show because i enjoy the the banter i i find that i uh crack up a lot at our show Mostly at me. I laugh at my own jokes. Gee. But I, I do see that find coming. our show to be pretty funny. I yeah. like the banter. I like the back. So are we actually kind of funny? Or... Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't you do that. But I might actually laugh at that part, but probably not. You're welcome. You're hey, welcome. do you feel like doing a show like this has made you more interested in games or experiences you might not have been interested in otherwise? Or do you feel like you've yes. kind of maintained what you're already interested in and this hasn't changed it? I already bought a lot of games. Everybody knows that. But I think I have given, you know, I've always been hard on indies. But if you pay attention over the years, I'll give indies a shot. Like yep. if they look interesting, I give them a shot. And I do Good think. Good example, that Dead Cells. You like Dead Cells, right? I did like Dead Cells. And then I think there's some, uh, well, even like Ori, even though that's a really beautiful game. That was technically like a smaller title at the time, but I think the talking about games um, and and bringing out smaller games. Sometimes you guys will talk about a game. I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about, and Tim always gets mad at me because I'm typing on my <laughs> keyboard. But I'll usually look up what you guys are talking about, and if it looks interesting, I'll either go buy it or look at reviews or something. So I it helps me. Uh, I become more educated on these smaller titles that if I wasn't doing this podcast, maybe I know about them, but I probably don't pay attention to them as much. Yeah. I mean, generally for me, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty on top of like things that are coming out. Like I like to go on, um, I bet you're on, top on websites. Yeah. Out. Well, I'm a topper. So, okay. So is that an example of a joke that we both <laughs> don't think that funny, but you think's funny and you'll laugh I'm at gonna, it later. I am <laughs> definitely going to laugh at it. Okay. And, and you're telling me that wasn't funny. I mean, it was okay. It's not as it's good as like, my eyelid. It's a little, it's a little easy. You know? It's not a good, as good as my <laughs> eyelid joke, but that's fine. Oh, I, I bet you're on top of it. Like, it's not that, you know. <laughs> He's so Der- snooty. You know but what? It- <laughs> hey, you know who I miss is Snobby Tim. You know, yeah, I do miss Snobby <laughs> Tim. Snobby Tim was, was around so a while there in the early yeah. days. No, you know who I miss is Censor Tim. Just censoring everything left Dude, and right. Dude, I totally forgot abandon. about Snobby Tim. We had a good solid like month and a half where I just did Snobby Tim over and over. Oh. Snobby Tim, like um, uh, the storyline and the cutscenes, like it, like Snobby Tim was fantastic. It's just not indie enough, you know what I'm saying? It's just too big. Not enough they independence. Didn't, they didn't put real passion into their creation here. <laughs> Jesus, I totally forgot about Snobby Tim. He's yeah, probably Snobby gonna have Tim. to come back. Yeah, we'll bring him back. We'll bring him back. Uh, anyway, Dan, what were you gonna say? Oh, <laughs> no, I was saying that I'm pretty aware of games that are coming out. Okay. So the main thing, as far as like, it, kind of oh, what funny. Derek, that <laughs> what Derek was saying is in regards to having conversations about games. For me, it's just it's literally that is having the conversations because it's one thing to like be on Facebook and like typing things and yeah. and kind of maybe like thinking things out um, because you have a moment to do that because you're typing it. But when you're like kind of thinking off the top of your head, like, oh, how do I actually feel about this thing? Or you're trying to kind of collect all of your thoughts about a game that you've played maybe only a couple hours versus a game that you've been playing for like 30, 40 hours. Well, it's I very, think it's also very different fun. Thoughts, you know? yeah. I think it's fun, like, using um, my favorite game in the entire world as an example, Dragon Age Inquisition. Like, we talk about it a lot because Daniel and I like that game. We have well, a, you're replaying like, it now too, right? Yeah. So you're... Top and of mind. we have an, an emotional connection to that game, and yep. Tim doesn't. So yep. one of the reasons why I think we bring it up so much is, yes, do we like it? Yes. 
But I also were like, when is this guy going to realize the <laughs> errors of his ways that this game was made for him, that if he actually dove into it and gave it a fair shot, he would be like, you know what? I should have played this like six, like really played. I'm not talking about put a couple hours in. Like I should have just dove in and played this game six years ago. Derek, so, I have the answer for you. It's because George Lucas keeps telling him no. He's just no. like, no, no, Tim. It's no. not the best Star it's Wars not, game, no. Tim. I did all message right, George about They're this. They're all stupid, and, uh... Tim. <laughs> there's, not, there's not enough metachlorians yeah, in it. Because after, yeah, I was say, after the prequels, I really value George's opinion <laughs> on high quality. There's not enough metachlorians. <laughs> we, need to, we need to do some more wall running, Tim. <laughs> Dragon Age doesn't have wall running and dumbass fuck. Puzzles everywhere. Ah, oh, uh huh. Thank you for censoring yourself. It saves me a little bit of time. I appreciate that. Listen. Anyways, I think you guys get my point. What the is fun your point? of it is, I do have a point. Okay. The fun of it is to have like this passion and this emotional connection to games, and then you get to share them with not only yes. the listeners, but yep. sometimes the guy I'm looking at through the screen right now who doesn't get it. Absolutely. And he needs to get it so i need to explain it to him so then he can ignore me and, and you get the me. well and then you also get the immediate feedback so when you make a big <laughs> post you make a big post about your favorite game or boy i'm playing this game right now and whether it's you're replaying it or it's brand new and it's surprising you whatever it is it's giving you some kind of uh you're, you're delighted by this game you want to share it i like the podcast format because you can talk about it immediately share your thoughts and maybe win someone over to try it maybe someone else is also playing it and they share the same feelings or maybe they disagree with you. And so I like the immediate feedback. It's much more engaging. I think that's why we all love Facebook groups about any topic we like people who are in Facebook groups about, um, about construction or about video games or about movies or about um, DIY stuff or art or whatever their thing is. They like to post about the thing they're passionate about and get others who are passionate about it as well to give their feedback and their thoughts. We get a chance, and really it's only because we bought a couple microphones and know how to hit record, we get a chance to actually get direct feedback on, hey, here's what I think about a thing. I think I articulated it decently, maybe not perfectly, but decently. What do you think about what I just said? And if you played it yourself, what do you think about it? So it's just a lot of fun. It's just a blast to do, to actually sit down and talk about something that we spend time doing. I will say this. There is part of me, because we do this on such a regular basis, there's part of me that I take it at least relatively seriously. Like I want to be up to date on the news of what's happening more than I was before. Mm -hmm. I want to be up to date on games that are coming out more than I was before. I like being very knowledgeable about what's happening in the industry. So things like E3, I used to just watch it as a fan and listen as a fan and read up as a fan. But now I'm like, oh, I want to make sure that I know enough that I can talk about and respond to stuff. And so, but I enjoy that. Like I, I take that responsibility at least relatively seriously as someone who's still doing this for the most part as a hobby. Um, but it's still, I take it more seriously than I would have as just someone who's reading up on it because I want to find out what game's coming out. Now I want to find out what am I going to say about this on the next podcast? So it's, it does make me approach it a little bit differently. And I have noticed, and I was actually, and if you guys can answer it, we'll do this as a question. But if you can't answer, I know it's kind of a difficult question. But have you guys on this show had a conversation or had one of us sharing about a game that inspired you to go play it and that you actually either A, had no intentions of ever playing it, or B, you had had started it before and didn't like it, but after having the conversation or listening to somebody's opinion on a game, go and play it and then love it. For me, yes. off the top of my head, and there's been several, Tim has swayed me to try several games. Like, he's gotten me to try Hitman and to give Mad Max another try and stuff like that, but I would say Metal Gear Solid Five was mm -hmm. one of them that I started it, did not like it, and then as we went on through the year, that year, Tim kept talking about it. And then I eventually came back to it. And now it's one of my favorite games this generation. Yep. And it was from not just the show. I would say the Facebook group actually helped too because people post on it. But I do think the show and Tim's opinion on it definitely encouraged me like, hey, you need to play this game. Yeah, the biggest one for me uh, was Bloodborne. I probably never would have tried it, but... Derek talking about 
any kind of from software game really i was like this is these just aren't for me you know i tried dark souls yeah. early on didn't really click i was like i don't get this it's too hard it's too weird it doesn't seem fun who am i what's my storyline what's my motivation as a character <laughs> and so awesome. getting getting the I'm making fun of myself there. Take it easy. Uh, <laughs> but getting the context and really an explanation of here's what you have to do, approach it with this mindset, and push through till you get to this point. I, I remember getting that kind of specific direction from Derek, especially on Bloodborne. I was like, okay, I'm going to try it because I had tried it before. It didn't really click. I didn't like it. Dude, I got so hooked on that game. Couldn't stop playing it. Absolutely loved it. The setting was amazing. The bosses and the artwork. It was all so great. The gameplay is a blast. Can't wait till they make a sequel to Bloodborne. Yeah. All that's because Derek convinced me to do so. I don't think someone writing a Facebook post or texting me about it would have convinced me. I think it was the back and forth uh, actually hearing someone talk about it directly and then me asking questions and pushing back yeah. like, oh, it just sounds too whatever. That totally got me to buy in on that. Another one recently was Jeff Whitman getting me to try out a game like Observation. Unfortunately, didn't like it as much as he did, but I'm willing to try out games when someone passionately sells me on it. And it's like, hey – that actually sounds really interesting. Yeah, Tales, the one that you like. Tales Asperia? of the... Oh, no. Not the, the, the stupid story-driven one that Tales I just made fun of the yeah. other day because somebody was asking, hey, do you, have you guys played the Innocence, Tales of Innocence or whatever oh, game? Plague oh, yeah, Plague Tale? Yeah, Plague Tale. Yeah. And I, I probably wouldn't have played that game. I was semi-interested in it because I heard things yeah. outside of our podcast. But you guys, well, really, Tim, uh, because then Daniel started playing it after that, too. Tim talked about it, and I was like, all right, I, I should play it because I know he bought it. Didn't love it, and I still haven't beat it. Like, I think it, I can see the quality of it, but it's not my type of game. But my point is, is I probably wouldn't have ever gotten around to it if you never Ooh. talked about I it. I think I was going to say that's the next thing, as I think... I'm more willing to try out games I never would have even fired up when I hear someone else talk about it. So whether it's been Dan talking about some really in-depth RP, like I remember uh, stuff like Persona 5, I wouldn't have given a shot. But whether it was Dan talking about it when he was a guest on our show or others posting about it or Derek talking about it, I gave it a shot and I played it for a good amount of time. Didn't end up clicking with me. I didn't want to spend that much time doing that um, – kind of day-to-day -day routine, which is funny because I love Fire Emblem and it really is very similar with its day-to-day -day routines, but that's a separate conversation. Um, anyway, all that to say, it makes me want to try out games I normally wouldn't have, you know, and uh, and that's why I think it's kind of interesting. And I and I wonder if the same if it's the same thing for our listeners. They hear us talking about games. Um, and if, again, if we were talking about TV shows, let's say we were a TV show podcast and we, all, we talked all about new Netflix shows. I think it'd be the same thing. Dude, you got to try this new show. It's all about this and here's why you might like it. I think we might be able to convince each other to try a few episodes or something like that. So I think it's the same thing. I think both of us, really all of us, talking about The Witcher 3, have gotten people in our group who maybe wouldn't have tried Witcher 3 to dive in and give it a try and end up loving it or hating it, whatever. I mean, it's an amazing game, so they're stupid for not liking yeah. it, obviously. Yeah. And obviously. now you can get the entire <laughs> game and its two really incredible DLC packs for, like, if there's a good sale going on, you get it all for like 12 bucks or something insane. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's pretty excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so Dan, any anything else uh, that you've got? Well, so uh, how do you guys feel like you like the the version of you right now versus when you guys first started? Like some of the differences, because I would imagine, like for me, for example, <clears throat> um, I and I'm sure people notice I sometimes maybe stumble with my words because I'm not used to doing this as much as you guys. Um, like sometimes when I'm speaking, I'm trying to like think of a word and I'm just hanging up on it. And then Derek's like making some stupid face, like hurry the hell up, you stupid idiot. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, obviously for it's happening done, right now, exactly just happened right now, doing it for 200 episodes, I would imagine <laughs> you guys learn it. Like it becomes something that you learn. It's a craft that you learn and you get much better with it. Is there anything specific that you remember when you guys first started? You're like, oh man, like I'm not doing great with this, but like. Mm. You know, over time, maybe you kind of well, notice. For me, in the beginning, it's that uh, it's like Tim and I are just starting to date, so you don't know what's going on. Like you're just getting really to know each other. You don't know how this is going to be structured, so that's another reason uh, I appreciate Tim. And I've told him this in the past. Like I appreciate his uh, 
his organization because if it was two Derek's doing this show, I still think it would be fun, but it would just be unorganized and be like, hey, who's better looking than who? I don't know. <laughs> Let's just talk about it. You mean you when know? the two of us just record, basically? <laughs> It's unorganized. <laughs> it's unorganized. But, like, it's still entertaining to me, but it's unorganized. Like, Tim brought in organization. He was prepped. And then it, you don't – and he said this earlier. You don't want to do too much of that. Like, because if you have that, then it's – like, if it, it feels, like, scripted, it's not organic feeling, and it's right. annoying. Right. So you have to have balance. So I think Tim brings in structure – and then I bring in crazy and then we kind of come at it and we and my point is, is in the beginning, we we're just kind of feeling each other out, feeling out the scripting. We were scripting yeah. a lot in the beginning. And yep. then we got feedback even from people like Frank. I remember Frank Clark, one of his big feedbacks was, hey, guys, stop doing the stupid deals of the week, which for me was a big deal, because back yeah. then, four years ago, I was all about scamming the system getting the best deals and so (laughs) i took pride in that so i was like i want to share like i want people to know about the best deals but here's the thing most people weren't listening to our show until three or four days after we released it or recorded it so not most of the deals hadn't passed but the point was is that they either knew about them or it wasn't relevant like that's not why they were listening to the show so we took feedback like that and we started fixing the show and then we got into this i think rhythm that we're in now where tim could you know obviously we've added daniel now but when it was just tim and i where he would just text me like hey you want to record tonight i've got a few notes what do you think of this yeah that sounds cool and then we would just meet up and do it um and i think we got to a place where we got comfortable with the structure and also letting it go but if you notice and listeners notice they're not dumb tim reigns it in Derek's talking too much. Daniel and Derek are going at it, and we got to move forward. So, like, there's good structure, but it's also free flowing. So yeah, I, I really didn't that's... know what a conversation with you in a recorded setting would be like. I knew in Rocket League what it could be like to just sit and chat while you're playing games. And it's, yeah. there's, an, who wants to structure that? That's retarded. But um, instead, with the podcast, I knew, okay, okay, to get things started, before we figure out how the other person operates, let's just have a real clear cut outline and here's what we're going to talk about. And then here's what's next. And then, and then I'll throw it to Derek for this thing. And I remember having it really planned out. Part of me was excited and nervous, but also just unsure of how it was going to go. Like, were we going to actually vibe together in a conversation? I learned very quickly that I had so much in an outline. I was like, we got to make sure we fill an hour. We record for like two and a half hours. Yeah. And the next time it was like two hours and 40 minutes. The next time you it was guys like – did have really long episodes. We had <laughs> super long episodes, and it was – we weren't intending to do that. But the thing that happened I so noticed so was that, oh, hey, we are already buddies, but we're becoming closer friends and actually interested in what the other person is saying and allowing the other person to talk a lot more and actually listening to each other for the most part. And that was yeah, creating totally. super long episodes. Yeah, <laughs> Derek's not on his phone at all. Now that he's so zoomed out, we can totally see when he's not paying attention. Yes. Uh, but I – after a while, I learned like, hey, you know what? Why don't I just come up with – every once in a while, I have a, a longer sheet of notes because something big happened. But for the most part, it's like two or three bullet points, and we might or might not even hit those. It's just let's just start the show. This new game came out. Let's make sure we talk about, for example, the Outer Worlds. And here we go. And that's just kind of how we dove into it, and I think yeah. it worked. It just took a while. It took a while for us to really settle into, hey, let's keep this more at about an hour, maybe an hour and a half if there's a lot to talk about. So what yeah. did we decide to do? Destroy this show and restructure into something new that we're going <laughs> to now be awkward again. Yeah, I can't wait for the awkwardness to kick back but in. But now you guys will be on my level of awkwardness, so then we're all even. <laughs> you never struck me as awkward, though, Dan. In all honesty, like I, one of the reasons we invited you is because I always felt you did a good job of communicating. And none of us are perfect. Derek and I plenty of times say the wrong words and word things in a weird way, or we'll, we'll be right in the middle of a big moment. And we're like, it's Hell the, um, yeah, the, um, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, Oh, what's it called? Like both. Yeah. Know. I forget words all the time. Oh yeah. I, I mean, don't do knowing things. We thing wouldn't for- have, we wouldn't have invited you on if we were like, all right, let's invite Dan, but are we cool with the fact that he doesn't know words? Is that <laughs> so cool? I don't know the best annou- words. Can we just announce what we're doing next? So guys, we're not going to be doing a gaming podcast anymore. We're doing trucking. <laughs> trucking. And we only trucking. record while we're trucking. <laughs> you have to either you know- be trucking 
or beeping, and that's <laughs> we, the only thing you can. We do. only record while we're trucking, and we use CB radios. Okay, our our <laughs> audio just comes through CB. It's gonna be really poor quality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm heading south oh. down on 95. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be great. Yeah. It's gonna be great. Well, I so appreciate yeah, you harder. saying that though, because I mean, as someone, and I hate throwing. A- I hate throwing around this word because too many people do it nowadays and they take advantage of others when they're saying it because they're trying to like not do things. Anxiety. Yes. Well, oh, sure. a- anxiety. Yeah. Anxiety. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I definitely have anxiety when it comes to say being in a large group of people I don't know and like speaking at them. That's gotcha. just something that I've always struggled with. As I got older, I got better with it. Yeah. But like that's what kind of leads to sometimes me like, oh, I'm fumbling with my words. And then like in my head, I'm like, oh, I can't think of the word. I can't think of the word. So. Yeah. But like, yeah, so sometimes I feel like maybe I am not being as articulate as I can be. So yep. I get in my own All head. All you need to but, do, yeah. Daniel, is not listen to the Frank Clarks of this world. Oh, who? Frank who? Frank Flark? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that guy. He stopped <laughs> listening to our show a long time ago, so he'll never hear it. Um, Frank Clark. But, uh, but you know, it's interesting you say that because Derek comes from a background, as he shared, where – He's been in leadership and speaking positions, whether it's at church or whatever else uh, that he's been. He's done a lot of, all right, I'm leading this group. At the very least, I'm talking in front of this group. Yeah. I have a same, a very similar uh, background. I did eight years where I worked in churches and I was almost always up in front of people, yeah. almost all the time, up in front of people, talking, communicating. I even did that as a high schooler and, and in college a lot. Yeah. So I was very comfortable doing that. And even if I wasn't always totally prepared and I felt a little nervous, I was usually able to kind of just make it work, you know, mm-hmm. kind of maybe get the people around you involved because I don't really have everything I need prepared. So yeah. let me open it up for a Q&A. And I, I was always OK with that. And yeah. so that translated into a work setting, too. And I shifted over into more of a digital marketing world, got it out of doing um, – kind of nonprofit ministry stuff and into a digital marketing world where it was in sales meetings and I've, or I've got to manage clients and I've got to talk to these executives and CEOs and explain to them stuff about their website. They don't understand. Mm. I found myself being pretty comfortable in those yeah. settings in a large boardroom with folks that all make a lot more money than me. But then I realized quickly like, Hey, I'm the expert on this yeah. thing. So I think I approached this show and I encourage mm. you and Derek to approach it the same way. We're kind of, for the most part, we're not being paid, but as, as expert as amateur podcasters can be like, sure. we know a ton about this stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and I think people listen because they care about our opinions on stuff where we've all proven to be, especially you with Sekiro, it's was super annoying by the way. We've all proven <laughs> to be pretty good gamers or at, at the very <laughs> least to be able to talk about them in, in uh, intelligent ways. How in the world did you beat that game anyway? I don't so know. Fast. I t- t- anyway. And again, it's funny. Cause when I was, you know, watching YouTube, down, doesn't down, count, left, right? Left, you just right, watch right. YouTube. I mean, I listen to him. I, I I beat the game, so that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, that's true. God, that game was so let's, unbearably annoying, though. So let's not annoying. get into the details of how I did it. Just know that I did it, okay? <laughs> it um, took many what was that times. that old, old many school thing that you could purchase? The Game Shark. Put, yeah, Game Shark. Yeah, that's what yeah, he bought. He bought a Game Shark. shark. He was entering, I, like, codes for it. I put in my PlayStation 2 Game Shark into my PS4. <laughs> I remember I, uh, I, n- I never owned a Game Shark, but one of my friends had one for the Sega Genesis, and it was the coolest looking thing. It was like a thing that you put the cartridge in, and then you put that into your machine or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Anyway, I thought it was the coolest well, thing. It's kind of like made. what you did with Sonic, right? Sonic, th- yeah. Was it Sonic 3? I think so. And I Sonic so. 2, and then you, you can, can use like Infinite Sonic Lives 2. or Invincibility and all, all kinds yeah. of stuff you could add in there, which was yeah. mind-blowing back in the day. But anyway um, – but anyway, yeah, so to Derek's point earlier, talking about what we're going to do next, uh, it, what he said is not true. Uh, what we're actually Hell gonna, yeah, brother. We're not actually going to be trucking. Uh, but Just our truck next, through that joke. Our next show, which you can go find now and subscribe to and start listening to, is called Current Gen. And the, the theme of the show is no longer about like, hey, we're a couple of dads just talking about games. Uh, that's <laughs> That part's over. Uh, Derek and I are still dads. But uh, that's no longer the – the yeah, you gotta uh ask my kids i'm not really their daddy <laughs> okay well i'm still a dad at least uh so uh anyway now the whole point is we we wanted to go into this idea of let's talk about the main three consoles there's three of us and there kind of is a natural split between who likes what console more although all of us do dip our toes into the waters of other consoles for the most part derek if you take out pc i think it's fair to say that although you play some nintendo and you play a lot of ps4 I think Xbox is more your thing. 
even back you've oh, always yeah. said this like you've always been a microsoft guy where's and, it at what do you got oh, I, I lost you looking my for shirt. a tattoo you got what do you got oh, oh, okay. i lost my xbox shirt. Nah, you i can, have you an can official <laughs> i have an official xbox shirt for our so for our show. as we launch into this new it's called current gen this new podcast which you can go again and subscribe to now uh, Derek's going to be talking to us from the perspective of what's happening with Xbox, Microsoft. That doesn't mean that Daniel's not going to be aware of stuff. Maybe someday buy an Xbox. Who cares? He might chime in on it. Yeah, I, of course, own an Xbox. That is a mother fudge and pony right there. I, uh, <laughs> I, I will <laughs> chime in on my thoughts too, but for the most part, when it comes to our new podcast, Derek's going to be our go-to expert on Microsoft. Dan, as Derek just referred to as our pony, he's going to be our Sony boy. I'm so your pony. He's boy, gonna, boy. He's going to be updating us on how much weaker the PS5 is than the Xbox Series X. Thank and, God. Uh, <laughs> but he's going to be keeping us up to date on all things Sony. And, and of course, that leaves me, your, your resident Nintendo and indie fella. For the most part, Nintendo. So, so if Nintendo launches the Wii U 2, yeah. are you going to actually buy it? I'm going to have to. I'm going to yeah. have to. Dedication to the show. I want to hear dedication. Dedication to the show. Um, So so I think what that will allow us to do is allow us to do a couple things. One, it's going to give us just a a shift of focus. And I think it's going to – I'm hoping kind of inject new life into our conversations because now we have a little bit of a a different structure to how we do things. But also it allows us to uh, kind of each take ownership of the different areas of the show instead of just saying like, hey, what's in the news this week? Uh, there's a new Witcher TV show. Like it's actually – here's what Microsoft is doing. Here's what Sony's doing. Here's what Nintendo's yeah. doing. And uh, and I'm hoping it gives us some some interesting and hopefully also some games we want to play. Timothy uh, wants to play games. I do want to play a few games. games. So uh, Dan got me to start listening to Easy Allies podcast, and I am yeah. enjoying it. It is a fun show. And one of the things I really like that they do, and now it's mostly listener um, provided, by the way, is they will fire up some kind of quick quiz game. Or yeah. was this from a game or from a movie? Or did yeah. did you say this? Or did the you know did someone else? Whatever is those games a, are. Is this a Pokemon or a real animal? I love yeah. that one. Yeah. So those <laughs> kinds of games, I, I want us to start doing a little more stuff like that. Um, but also when it comes to uh, console launches, uh, new exclusive game launches, we're going to really rely on each other to share what's going on with those. So that's what the new show is all about. You guys uh, can go uh, listen to the first episode now. So go over and check out current gen. Uh, we'll probably end up changing the group name to that here in the next few weeks uh, as well. So even though it's still fathers of the grind, treat it the same way, you know, with no respect whatsoever, whatsoever. Uh, it's, we'll probably shift the name over to current gen uh, here in a little bit. So, any thoughts from you two guys on that new show? We've talked about this for several months now, gone back and forth on the name and the Are design it? for it and the whole – it really came to – at first it was, hey, let's rethink what Fathers of the Grind is. That's where it started. And uh, let's let's just kind of rename it. Let's come up with something else. And then here comes Mr. Theme, Tim Nestor, uh, with his ideas of let's theme it, you guys. And so my thought was, hey, what if we actually each represented one of the consoles and each week we update – the listeners and each other on what's happening with our specific main, of the main three consoles. That doesn't mean we can't talk about other stuff. If Google Stadia ever becomes relevant, we'll talk about that. You know, <laughs> yeah, if I'm Derek still can still talk to us about PC. PC. Yep, we'll still hear about that. Um, but for the most part, we'll keep it focused on those three things. So, what do you, what do you guys think about this? Are you what, what what are you interested in about this? What made you agree to it? So, what I took out of this whole process was Tim is doing all the work, and Derek and I cannot agree on <laughs> names or what the logo should look like. That's what I took out of this whole experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only so. thing I took from all of this is that I just wanted to buy an Xbox shirt. <laughs> it was just an excuse to buy an Xbox like, shirt. As long as I get to be the Xbox guy, because there's a really cool shirt at GameStop. I really like their color green and black and stuff like that. So that's no, what we talked about. I think <laughs> okay, so I think it's gonna be similar to what Fotka was. Of course. There's gonna be uh, a ton of similarities, yeah. There's gonna yeah. be a lot of overlapping. I think the main difference is I think it's like like you said, instead of it just being like a rundown of, hey, this is what's happening in the news, we can actually talk about our specific like it'll be Daniel's responsibility to not miss a major news story for PlayStation. Like, are Tim and I probably going to be aware? Yeah, because we follow games. But if if we aren't following it and Daniel doesn't call it out, 
the the listeners should be calling him out because he's supposed to be the expert over PlayStation. Same thing with me with Xbox. Any first party, anything that's going on with Xbox, I should know the news. I should be playing the games. I think that's important. No, I'm not forcing you guys to buy every game day one. But I think we should be trying to play yeah. as many games that are, are relevant. That's that's what matters. Relevant day one on those platforms. And I think if we're going to be assigned to those platforms, we should try to play them. On it's a bummer of a year for us to start this for me because I've never been a big Animal Crossing fan. But <laughs> I, uh, I already know which games I'm going to be trading in. I've got some stuff that I don't play anymore. And by the way, Switch games maintain a good amount of trade in value. Oh, yeah. Really do, man. Well, it's because they're worth a, they're still the price is still, still all yeah. the way up there. So yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So some of there's actually one or two that I noticed, like, hey, if I trade in the physical copy, I've already seen these on sales for almost that exact same price for the trade in value. So yeah. I don't play it anymore. I'll trade it then, maybe buy it digitally later. Anyway, all that to say, uh I am uh, I feel dedicated to this new show and the direction it's going, and you know I'm dedicated because I don't care that much about Animal Crossing, but I'm buying that game. I'm gonna play it, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Tim, gonna... we can visit each other's towns and and hold hands and and just have a good time. It, you know what's gonna, gonna happen? Is I'm gonna end up getting hooked on that stupid game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny. I've actually never I never played an Animal Crossing at all. I, I um, played the DS one uh, back when the Nintendo DS was first a thing like the okay. tank version of the Nintendo DS. Yeah. Well, it was like the second animal crossing entry, I okay. think. Um, so I played that one and I got it. I was like, this is, this is adorable. And I get it. It's like, you're, you're basically, it's a kind of a Sims type of sure. experience yeah. where you're just kind of living and collecting stuff and upgrading and you're not battling anything, but who wants to battle? Everything's so adorable. So anyway, it's chill. Um, so I, I, I get the appeal. It's never appealed to me, but back to Derek's point, I want to make sure that if we're going to have this show and if we want to pitch it as, hey, guys, we're going to keep you updated on all the current gen stuff, just so you guys know, we're not going to be skipping anything major especially. So um, I, I'm looking forward to making sure that we at least have impressions for folks of – because I might yeah. trade in Animal Crossing Day 2. We'll see. Like I think um. it like, – and it goes back to what I was talking about earlier where I've heard podcasts that – they they brand it as hey we're a PlayStation podcast or whatever and they're they're not even playing the games that are launching like to me that's stupid that's like somebody coming to our show and listening and then Halo Infinite launching and me be like oh, I'm not that interested I don't think I'm gonna buy it but you're the voice of Xbox I'm playing Rocket so, League right now so. yeah so so that that's our goal it's like and, Eric that doesn't for the mean entire that, year last year okay. and I think I think it's also important important to stress and I I really do believe all three of us are very objective in this way I can play an Xbox game because I'm not really a fanboy it is my favorite platform but it's uh, of the three but I'm not a fanboy. I can play a first-party Xbox game, and if it sucks, it sucks. And I'm going to say it sucks. And I expect Daniel will be able to do that with PlayStation and Tim with Nintendo. And that's where I think we can get maybe even grow the group and grow listeners is that people can come and listen to us debate, listen to our impressions on each platform, get some knowledge, but also hear honest, objective slash subjective opinions where it's not like, Oh, Derek likes Xbox, so everything's best on Xbox. Every game mm -hmm. that comes out is good on it. No, it's not that way. There's yeah. a lot of trash that comes out on the Xbox. That's first party. So I'm going to call it out. If I love it, I'm going to praise it. That type of thing. Yep. That's what okay. I want. Dan, what are your thoughts on this thing? I know we've kind of battled back and forth over text and Facebook <laughs> Messenger and all kinds of things for a long time. And by the way, I do appreciate you guys uh, – I understand it's like, hey, here's a new logo I was playing with late last night on Photoshop. What do you think? And so, like, I know it's always a lot to throw at you. What do you think? Here's all my well, ideas. I mean, again. So I'm bouncing you, them off of you all the time. So what has this process been like for you and how are you feeling about it as we move forward? Well, again, like, I was being serious. You did, like, the art and you even, like, made the, the intro song. Like, I said I was going to make one and I, I did actually start making one. But due to some stresses in my actual life that I was actually yep. telling Derek about – with my apartment and buying a house and all of that, I just kind of didn't do it. So I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> right. I, I did start a song, but it did not get finished. So I appreciate obviously you doing that, but um, yeah, no, I mean, starting something new is really cool. I was just kind of like, 
sort of, I guess, letting you guys spearhead the thing because this was your baby, you know, Fathers of the Grind. So I was kind of being like, well, if that's what you guys want to do, I'm down to kind of go into that next thing and and go about it however you guys do want to go about it. I still wanted to contribute my opinions and because I, I still kind of wanted, or at least in my head, like certain things make sense and then some don't. You know, yeah. again, like how Derek and I would go back and forth about the names, matching up with the logo and kind of like the vibe of that and maybe yep. it not making sense, but, you know. Yep. Yeah. But, cool. um Yeah. No, it's... But you're I, looking forward to being our, our pony boy? Indubitably, yes. <laughs> Although I am very concerned because if we're called current gen, if we talk about anything other than current gen, what's going to happen? Does our does our show explode? Yeah, like exactly. what happens? Well, I don't, I don't I know think what's going to happen. We've learned from experience that just because our show is called Fathers of the Grind, <laughs> turns out we didn't have to talk about parenting really ever. Or so we, weren't all, we weren't always fathers and we weren't always grinding. We weren't always grinding. We also oh. weren't a coffee podcast. Some folks thought we were a really clever name for a coffee podcast. And <laughs> nope, <laughs> not okay, that. Sure. Yep, not that at all. So no. anyway, okay. no, I think the idea we just of a couple of skater, father skaters. There <laughs> are. And I, I just heard these numbers recently. There are about 600,000 podcasts or something like that uh, out in the wild right now. Mm. Active active podcasts. Yeah. There's so many options out there. Oh, yeah. And one of the things we kept running into was we'd come up with what we thought was a clever name and look it up. And, oh, of course, there's already one, two, three, wow, like eight podcasts that already have that name. And they're all vying for that same. So we wanted to come up with something unique. Current Gen is currently at the moment at least unique. It also, for the most part, describes what we're talking about. The current generation of consoles are going to be up to date. As Derek talked about earlier, I want to maintain that idea of, hey, we're up to date on what's happening in the gaming industry and new games that have come out. Mm-hmm. So we're staying current. Uh, also, we are talking about these various consoles. So I think of current gen. I think of what are the current consoles out from each of the main, main manufacturers. But it also leaves us open to talk about some PC stuff if we need to, if if Derek ever gives me his PC for free, things like that. You know? Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> But it, it keeps us ava- – it lets, allows us to, I think, talk about all things current in gaming. That's kind of the idea. Um, that doesn't, that doesn't have to be limited to consoles necessarily, but that's where we're going to start, and uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Let me ask uh, especially you, Derek, this, but Dan, feel free to chime in because you – it's not like you – it's not like 40 episodes or whatever it's been for you. Is... It's been uh, exactly 30 episodes. Okay, 30 episodes. I mean, that's yeah. a significant amount of time. So I would say both of you, as we get ready to close this one out and wrap up Fathers of the Grind, uh, any final thoughts you want to share about doing this particular show, listening back to the show, uh, whether it's favorite moments or just any final things you want to communicate out? No, Go. I'm ready. I'm ready for this show to end and move on to – Current gen, I'm pretty excited about it. Like I said, um, I think it, I think it was appropriate to end Fathers of the Grind. It had its thing. Four Again, years, not, man. Yeah, yeah, it had its thing. I'm not saying current gen is going to be super different. It's not a lot of, it's not a lot of similarities, but I think a, a new beginning in this uh, circumstance is a, is a good thing. Yeah, two hundred episodes is not something to just, you know. Most podcasts be, don't last. Be kind of casual, like though. 10. Yeah. Like, I remember when podcasts beyond hit their 200th episode. That's when Greg was not being a uh, a bad word. Shots uh, fired. And, and and Colin and um and Ryan Clements was on there. And that was just, like, such a moment, like, when that happened. I, I remember that just being so awesome. And, yeah. like, you know, you guys, yeah, this is four years of of doing something like that's pretty cool so i am glad that derek and i aren't sitting here blubbering like greg and colin did on their final beyond (laughs) i don't know i thought that was kind of nice there were parts of it that were nice but i did hit a moment i remember listening to that show at first i was like oh this is pretty sweet like these guys really are best friends and they're moving on to something new but then i was like all right guys (laughs) at a certain point i was like okay sometimes you have to like take a step back and realize you're being stupid (laughs) well also they were both moving on together to pretty much do the exact same thing like if like if this was our last show and i was never going to do anything with tim i don't think i'm going to cry but i would have been like oh this sucks it sucks this ending but move on it would be but like but i know okay we're just like changing the logo and and that's uh, that's it (laughs) Change the logo. So Tim's like, so like, do you have anything to say? No, I said it the last hour. We're good. You know, one thing we used to do to close out all of our episodes oh, is uh, 
words of wisdom from Derek. So Derek, prepare that. We're going to have you close out uh, our final Fathers of the Grind episode. Can I just like the... flash my thigh or something? Well, <laughs> I need you to think about it because I'm going to share my final thoughts too so before, before we do that. We are going to come back to your final words of wisdom. That's so I, was, I would say this. I, I think uh, it's been really cool that we've been able to do it. Technology allo- allows us to just set up these – uh, video chats, hit record, and then share it with other folks on YouTube and on podcast feeds. That's pretty awesome that we can do that because other, without this, you've, you're stuck listening to shows that are put out by these major corporations. And again, some of them are great. I've always talked about stuff like Game Scoop being one of my favorite shows. For a while, I loved Podcast Beyond. Don't anymore. Uh, I like Easy Allies now. There's times when I enjoy things like Giant Bomb. But all that to say, for the most part, there's not always that, hey, this is someone a lot like me. I'm going to listen to these guys talk because they're a ton like me. It's usually folks who are industry insiders, and they're at all these events, and they get all the behind the scenes. And I get – if I'm just going to be totally honest, I get a little annoyed when someone like – I won't say who it is. But when certain, let's say, IGN staffers, as they're talking, they're like, well, this is a little bit inside baseball for you guys. But and that, those kind of <laughs> statements just really annoy me. I find it to be very condescending. I'm like, dude, we've played games just as long as you have. It's just you happen to live in San Francisco and work at a company that talks about this. So I, I feel like uh, um, we have a chance to connect with folks that are a lot like us. So I think it's really cool, and I'm looking forward to continuing to do that. Um, as Derek said, it has been cool to get to know each other really well over these last few years. And Dan, it's been awesome to get to know you over this past year, even more than I knew you before. So those things have been a lot of fun. I will say this. I super, super appreciate your guys' patience with, we've got a large family. Family obviously comes first for me. So if I can record, it's awesome. And I give a lot of credit to my wife and kids for letting me do that. My wife, especially. But if I can't, it's because family comes first. And of course, work comes first and all that kind of stuff. Well, also too, you didn't say in the beginning at all, we, what missed like two weekends or a weekend just because we you did. were sick so yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we I, weren't I, just being lazy like, we weren't just being lazy i was i was down for the count couldn't really talk very well and i was yeah. pretty wiped out but yeah. uh so, so I do, again i appreciate that like it, that's one of the coolest things about these two guys that most of you listeners probably aren't aware of is if i shoot over a text like guys i'm so sorry we just we can't do it this weekend. Like we, we already delayed it two nights in a row and now I'm just, I can't, I'm too sick or I can't too much family stuff going on. I've never once had them be like, wow, dude. Okay. Whatever. Like I've never gotten a response as anything except for, of course they come first. That's, that's how it should be. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons I like continuing to do the show with, with both of you idiots. Absolutely. Absolutely. I said Absolutely. idiots to see if Derek's paying attention. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but all right, we are going to close things out for Fathers of the Grind for the final time, and we're going to do that with some words of wisdom from Derek. Dan, anything you want to say before we let Derek wrap things up? Uh, just think that Star Wars is terrible and Dragon Age is fantastic. I just want to just make the, sure everybody knows. Great, great comparison. <laughs> Yet again, you guys, those two things are I mean, just trying so to enlighten the world. Similar. It's great to com- keep comparing them. Uh, so, Derek. Final words of wisdom. Hit us with it. Words are not wise unless they're wise. (laughs) Full wisdom. All right. See you later. (laughs) I legit don't have anything. For any of you who (laughs) made it to the point of the show, I'm so sorry. That was a huge buildup. The key to the key to that was to have the awkward silence. That I nailed it. That's all that matters. Really. Really, really all not. you just did was make them not want to listen to the new thing. So good job. So what exactly did I say? Words of I don't even <laughs> know you, what I said. Are you drunk right now? <laughs> I don't even know what I said. Oh, hey, let's actually Great close out with this too. So thank you for those tours of wisdom. Derek, do you want to go ahead and tell us your really off color and horribly timed Kobe Bryant joke before we leave? <laughs> oh, what was it though? Now it had to I, do with zombie know. games and basketball games. I know, I remember NBA 2K20. You silenced him then. You shouldn't have. Yeah, Silence. it was something like I, I wanted to play NBA 2K20 so I could play the the best zombie game or something. <laughs> that Kobe is what you Bryant. said. That's what it was. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, because it had Kobe Bryant on it. Uh, Guys, he said that the day the accident happened. It was like it totally would have been funnier if you wouldn't have silenced me back then because it flowed. It just came out. It made me feel so uncomfortable. Tim, you need to laugh through the pain. You just got to yeah, laugh through true. the pain. That's yeah, true. remember, hey, that's, remember that's... words are not wise unless they have wisdom in them. There, oh that was what I was trying to say. There you go. 
That is so good. You know what you're full of? Not wisdom, really but deep. bullshit. That's what you're full of. He cussed. Uh, we're also, telling. Rhode Island. It's not a road. Not an no. island. No. Nope. In case you guys were wondering. It's a waste of space is what it is. <laughs> All right, guys. Signing off for the last time for Oz the Grind. We will see you with current gen. Right. Peace. Peace. Who is your daddy? I am the father. You fathers will understand. My father taught me many things here. I got an idea. How about you all sit there quietly while I make dad noises? We didn't tell him that Jen is spelled G I N. <laughs> it's definitely not G I N. What was so that Gina thing? It's, I liquor, it's short it's for. Show? Like a vagina tool? I think you mean G-Y-N. We should have named ourselves after that vagina tool. Yeah, so if if it's... Hang on, we got a lot of options here. If it's current G-I-N, then now we're talking about (laughs) liquor. If we're talking about current G-Y-N, now we're talking about the latest in women's health, right? We should totally do that. I think I really would be great for women. What we'll do is each of us has a different lady, just right here, right? And we'll just do exams on them. We'll do exams. (laughs) We'll do exams. Um, yeah, educate. You know, the guys who don't know how to work. We might have to limit that to an audio only show. I'm afraid. Yeah, like I so, gentle, so hot. gentlemen, this is what a vagina looks like. Uh, and if you, you that'd be hot. And you know I'm most, wrong. you know most of our listeners have not seen a vagina. <laughs> so they would, act, yeah, they would totally want to. And with that, I'm hitting stop. <laughs>